Yeah, um, as Jay said, I'm Hendrik, I'm, I'm with Ubimax, and I'd like to talk to you about a bit of global live deployments of our customers that we've been working together for quite some years, and especially want to elaborate a bit on you know the key success factors that were there on their journey to really um, scaling solutions on, on a global level. Um, let's first look at some of the you know global live deployments that we see there out in the market. So when you when you look at it in terms of the industries, what we see is there are two industries really standing out being the early adopters of the technology, and that is automotive and logistics. Um, we've been working together with Daimler, for example, already back in 2013 to look into different use cases around warehousing, around assembly, and uh, also inspection activities. And Daimler by now is getting you know, lots and lots of improvements, both on, the, on a qualitative side as well as especially on the quantitative side. And they are now rolled out with various applications and use cases at multiple sites um, globally. And the same actually holds true for the logistics space. We clearly see a front runner being uh, DHL, um, being the early adopter in 2014, uh, achieving tremendous um, performance improvements. We've seen 25% plus performance increase, um, very positive worker feedback. And um, this goes on, and it goes on obviously to other industries. Uh, the, the tech industry is really um, close behind. They also deploying on the global scale already by now. And global basically means at scale, not just at one side, at multiple sides, and not maybe at just one country, but in many countries here. And, and there are many more coming up um, that are really at the point by now um, to really scale the business, not just do one, uh, application here and there, but really scale a certain solution. And I'd like to show you a video from one of our recent projects that we did together with Intel in the logistics space, um, because that video to me pretty cool shows what the benefit of the technology is already today, how the wearable tech can change the processes as they are, and also is speaking a bit about the key success factors um, for the technology and especially for Intel. So let's have a look. Hopefully that plays. For distribution centers faced with an ever-increasing quantity of orders, picking is still identified as the primary area for improved efficiency. Like other enterprises with complex supply chains, technology giant Intel is continually striving to improve efficiency in their worldwide distribution centers. The purpose of setting up the pilot was to learn what efficiencies we could drive with Headworn against something like a handheld scanner. Since I've been at Intel, we've been using handheld RF units, a combination of both scanning and data entry. My biggest issue with the hand scanners is that it's bulky. So you gotta scan multiple places. Uh, I don't like how much information I have to constantly put in. There's extra information that's not needed. Wasted time placing the RF unit on the shelf or on a cart. Happen to put it down, pick it back up, put it down, it's a hassle. We started talking to Ubimax and we brought them in as our partner and from there we created a new workflow. I think the biggest problem that we see today with handheld scanners is that they present information not in a very intuitive way, but they are overwhelming the user with information. Enter the Recon Jet Pro Smart Glasses, a hands-free wearable with a ruggedized form factor suited specifically for warehouse environments and professionals on the go. Through partnerships with industry-leading software and ISV providers, such as UbiMax, JetPro is a standalone device and a fully customizable turnkey solution tailored for your unique needs. At UbiMax, we knew there was a better way. So we only display relevant information to the user. We provide them with a very intuitive user interface, and we provide them with hands-freeness. The real benefit that we get from using an interface like XPIC was actually how fast someone could ramp up on the new device. Right from the start when I put it on, I just got it instantly. I was like, oh, I don't need explanation. I got this. It's more ergonomic. We can actually handle the box right. The Jet Pro is definitely ergonomically superior. The combination with the software, it made the training very simple. Jet Pro only shows us the information that we currently need. It shows us the location that we need to go to and what we need to scan, which overall makes us faster. Our hands are free with the Jet Pro, so that speeds us up a lot, just allowing us to scan, 
grab, go, and see where my next location is. The real benefit that we found was that we saw consistent efficiency gains across all of the workers, regardless of how long they've been here or not. The Recon Jet Pro could drive efficiencies that you couldn't use with other devices. Reduce your picking time per box up to 29% and increase performance of your order picking process with Recon Jet Pro, the new efficiency driver for logistics professionals. The Intel Recon Jet Pro, smart glasses for the smart enterprise. I, I don't want to speak um, too much about, you know, the performance improvements and all these kind of things that, that those organizations are getting out of the technology. But what I think becomes clear is the importance of usability on the one hand, say it combined with the technological capabilities of the actual devices. But what is actually the key factor, obviously, is um, what is the technology, what is the software actually that they're running? Because the software obviously becomes a key success factor for the enterprises. And what we've seen with Intel and the likes is basically that the industry is looking for actually solutions, ready to deploy solutions. They typically are not so much, given the current stage of the market, interested in you know, a kind of a platform play where you get a toolbox which potentially can solve your problem. They want to get solutions that right away solve the problem in the best case it is a solution that comes with kind of standardized and pre-configured processes that they just need to a little bit adapt in order to drive value for, for the enterprise. And obviously, um, since customers are more up to solutions by now, there has to be a solid foundation underneath in order to power those smart glasses, in order to provide the functionality that these enterprises need. And let me go through one of the couple of key elements that all of these customers basically elected as, as the, the key um, uh, success factors for their basic um, global deployments. And the number one, obviously, here is output rendering, right? What the platform gives you is really a device agnostic UI engine, engine that simply works. That simply works no matter whether you're selecting a monocular device, a binocular device, or whether you're not selecting a smart glass at all, but go for a um, smartwatch, right? Because right now the customers and the enterprises, they want to, especially in the early days, they want to test out different devices. They not just want to typically go with one, they want to change and exchange devi devices as they go and also play around a bit and also give the freedom of choice to the workers. And the second thing here is obviously pretty tied up with in output, and that is definitely input. Similar to the freedom of choice for the hardware devices, we also see clearly um, giving the choice of input interaction as a key success factor for global deployments, because yes, there can be some you know, suggestion, you better use this or that interaction technique for your for your applications, but even there, customers want to try out certain things. They want to rely on input methodologies that really are geared towards the wearable computing paradigm, meaning, for example, for voice recognition, it should be, in the best case, an offline voice recognition, not requiring any cloud access, because the reality is, for example, in the automotive space, if you go to the manufacturing lines, there is no access to the internet due to security reasons. And this is all kind of front end side, this is all important for usability and making the best user experience for the actual workers. But if you really want to scale a solution, there is more that you need in order to really globally scale. So there has to be also a back end side to the front end clients. And the back end side, one of the core components, I mean, despite the fact that you're collecting a hell lot of data and you can run analytics on top of it and all of these kind of things, is, and we've heard that actually in the session before from ACHO, um, workflows. So the core element of success factor um, is on the back end side, the availability of a workflow engine, kind of. It allows you to create work instructions and it, it particular allows and should allow as a key success factor for scale, the shop floor managers and the supervisors to actually create that content. Uh, 
in contrast to basically handing in IT change requests to the IT department and getting something changed. No, they really want to do this because when you scale those kind of solutions, you will pretty soon come to the place where there are operational needs popping up basically ad hoc and you need to change workflows and you need to have a way in order to update um, those workflows that are being processed by your workers in real time. And in the best case, you want to do this with visual editing tools that are kind of um, tailored in, in, in the set of features that they give to, to the shop floor people so that they are not overwhelmed. The situation is different if you're talking to an integration partner that went through you know, uh, weeks of training on such a platform. Uh, there's obviously different and, and you, you basically can expose more functionality to those um, user groups. So, so really tailoring the stuff to the audience, and in this case, the managers on the shop floor was key to or is key to most of the global deployments we've been, uh, we've been doing for our customers. And then there is another very important component. It sounds simple, but it's a key complexity driver. And that is the host system integration. Because when you speak about global deployments, you have to speak about um, the different backend connections, interfaces. This is a driver of complexity. It is obviously also a driver of cost for those enterprises. And I mean, if you're with the enterprise, if you really want to scale this on a global level, you end up not just with one backend systems, but with one backend system at each side. And it's usually not the same, right? You don't want to reinvent everything and build up everything from scratch. So you want to rely on things that are basically there that needs to be configured to your environment, but that you can rely on and not start Building out every time from the very beginning because it also shortens kind of the deployment cycles. And this is all good. This is all about the technology and those are key success factors in order to run the devices, in order to um, be, be able to manage those devices in, in, in reality. But there is even more and to me this is the most important thing and this is when you really roll this out, you have to ask yourself basically how do we as an enterprise actually work together with our solution providers? And this is not an easy thing to answer because when you, when you look at those deployments, you have to figure out the right split of responsibilities. And there are many things you need to take care of and think of. It's about the hardware side. It's about how to manage software. It's about how to manage the services around. It's about the support infrastructure that you're building up. And it's about the operational things. Many, many different questions, not easy answers to all of this. It definitely helps if you have kind of a, a target perspective or a vision of how you want to split up the responsibility in the end. For example, saying, you know, the software vendor takes over the responsible for the solution and maybe the third level support and these kind of things. But the reality is once you do this um, in the enterprise space, um, you need to carefully consider together with the enterprise what tasks and activities can they already take on early on? So what is their level of capabilities around the technology? And which of these activities they can take on kind of as they go and or as they grow through the process, basically? And we found it uh, together with the customers as one of the key success factors for all of these rollout programs on, a, on the larger scale that we've been able to provide a kind of a professional end-to-end -end infrastructure that gives the enterprises the flexibility of choice, deciding which process they want to run on their own and what not, kind of, and which later, and so on and so forth. I think those are the key elements that we've been seeing also customers struggling with when they really have the ambition to grow this stuff. That's it. I thank you for your attention. Cheers. So, hi everybody, Jay's had to go off to a meeting, so my name is Mark Sage, Executive <laughs> Director of the area, and I'm hosting this afternoon, so Henry, would you like to take a, a, a question? Yeah, well, uh, is Ubimax a turnkey solution? Well, um, you can consider the solutions that we're providing for, you know, the logistics space, the, the, the maintenance space, the assembly space, and the remote support. 
um, you can consider as, as a turnkey solution. Uh, I would actually say it's the kind of the Microsoft Office for the frontline worker, if you will, right? It's really a kind of a turnkey solution that you don't need to develop from scratch. It's just about configuring the stuff. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.